Okay. So our next speaker is uh, David Lampater from the Verge Genomics. The title for his talk is Genome-Wide Association Between Transcription Factor Expression and Crompton Accessibility Reviews Crompton State Regulators. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'm going to present this work that I did in uh, Switzerland at the University of Lausanne. Um, so basically, what is it about? So the ENCO project sort of showed that um, uh, DHS regions really nicely delineate where transcription factors bind, right? But what is not quite clear is how is this tra transition happening from closed chromatin to open chromatin? So what is, for a certain transcription factors, it could be that it's cause or consequence, um, whether they bind or not. So one aspect of this that has been studied is uh, pioneer factors. Basically, these are transcription factors that bind closed chromatin and then have the ability to open it up to some degree and let other factors bind. And you can ask the same question in the other direction, basically, which factors are responsible for stability. So how would you study this with uh, the ENCODE data that's out there? So the basic idea is that if a factor has the ability to open up chromatin, then um, increasing the levels of this factor should open up chromatin in the regions where there's transcription factor binding sites for this factor, all right? So first what you want to have is a motive accessibility score. So you collect all the motives of a certain transcription factor in the genome. You check the enrichment for this motive in the open chromatin section of the various cell lines. And I see like in this example, like cell line three has heavy enrichment for this motive in the DHS regions. And cell line two has very little. And now you compare this to the expression across different genes, right? So you can do an association study for, for expression across the genes and compare this to the motive accessibility scores. And what you would hope is that if, if a factor is, a, is responsible for this transition between open and closed, for example, if it's a pioneer factor, then the, um, the association should be strong and you should see for the annotated transcription factor, you should see a strong um, signal. Okay, so the data that was used is the ENCODE expression data for 109 cell lines and the corresponding DHS data and the library of motives. So now there's a, the hiccup. Basically, as you can imagine, because th these data are collected on the same cell lines and these cell lines are related to each other, you have heavy confounding, as you can see. Like if you, if you look at the matrix of, um, correlation matrix of the motive accessibility scores and compare it to the expression data, you can appreciate that it has a similar correlation structure. And so you have to control for this. And the strategy that was used was a, a mixed model approach. So basically what you do is you allow the noise term to have a similar shape as the covariance matrix, uh, the covariance matrix of the expression matrix. Right. And so show how this looks like in, in, on an example. So this is transcription factor EPF1. So if you, if you do this kind of regression approach across all the genes and you, you check the p-value distribution if you do a standard linear regression, you have heavy inflation and the true factor is somewhere um, in the middle. And now if you do use these mixed model approaches, um, the, true f the, the inflation goes away, so all the factors, all the genes follow the null distribution and the correct annotated factor is in the tail. It's not quite significant yet. If you do additional um, data munching, you can even get it to bond above the von Veroni cutoff. Now note here, it's because we know the annotated factor, we don't really need um, above one for only level because we, we can tell just by it's, that it's at the second position in, in the middle example that something interesting is going on. Yeah. So now if you do this comprehensively, you can, you can show that you have like heavy enrichment for the correct factors. So standard linear regression, you already see enrichment but then if you do these mixed model approaches, it really goes up. And now the question is like, is this biologically relevant? Um, 
so the one list that is, is um, you would, would hope to see enrichment in is the pioneer factors, right? So there has been a high confidence list published of these pioneer factors, and you see very high enrichment, like uh, very strong enrichment of these factors in the, fa in the motive, or transcription factors that have a motive that um, have a high score. Of course, the ones that have a high score also, um, there are many, many more than are not in this list. If you go into the literature, you see quite a few of them that are sort of handed around in the literature as being potential pioneer factors. Yeah, so I believe that's basically a screening tool. This would be interesting. This approach provides interesting candidates for pioneer studies. Um, yeah, that's all. So thanks to um, Sven Bergman, Sultan Kutalik, Rico, and Daniel. Uh, any questions? All right, thanks. Um,